All right, folks. Pliskin by 51 millimeter here. I uh, figured I'd make another video real quick. I know I just did one on the SPO1 and the grips. But uh, me and my dad got the M1A loaded out of the gun locker and played around a little bit. And I bought this wood uh, M1A stock off of eBay about this time last year. And it's been sitting back there in my gun locker. And of course, naturally, last year I bought the M1A NBS as well. Um, it's at the other place. And, uh, but I still have the old stock from it. This, uh, tricolor, uh, desert tone. Actually, it came with just the brown and flat dark earth. I added green stripes later. But, uh, this stock's kind of irrelevant now. But, uh, we put the M1A loaded action in this wood stock that I bought on eBay last year. And the, the fit and finish between the mating between the receiver and the stock is unreal same up here as well there's literally almost no wiggle of the stock ferrule i mean there's a little bit if you can hear but not as much as it is when it's in the nbs stock or in then when they loaded zod stock as you guys have seen this was the original from when I bought the rifle in 2015 and I've painted it and all that. But, you know, it kind of dawned on me that I could probably put this M1A loaded in this wood stock and just ma made it with this and leave it as B because the lockup is so tight. But the issue I'm running into is the trigger group. Now, the trigger group, I'm just kind of doing this as a little video. Yeah. Uh, to let y'all know what plans I've got going forward with this particular M1A. Um, but this trigger group here is the one that came with the M1A NBS Scout Squad. Now, this trigger group will only lock up with an M1A action in the NBS stock. And I wonder, I, that puzzled me because the loaded trigger group, which came with the loaded, but the loaded trigger group is currently with the M1A Scout Squad. Um, we'll lock up with both actions in all three of these stocks. So it was kind of a head scratcher. And I think the reason why this one is goofed. I mean it's got a little hair right here. Um, but uh, this one. The hook here. Receiver hook. That hooks into the receiver splines that run in these channels here. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Of course, those of you who have M1As know, but people who don't won't know. But see here in this stock, there's recess cuts for the receiver lugs of the M1A M14 system. And these receiver lugs lock in with these trigger hooks. On here, let me set that there, right here. See, so it's got these big hooks on the trigger group, and you lock and unlock it by swinging this trigger guard down, unlocking it from back here, and then swinging them down. And that's how you get the trigger group to come out. And then when you go to lock it back, you just, you know, press it until this little tab here comes up and over this notch here, and then that locks the gun. The action into the stock but the trigger hooks on this particular trigger trigger group that came with my m1a scout squad nbs this left one here although if we were looking at it from this way it'd be right but this one right here is out more this way almost like it's bent if you can see that in the light here Actually, it may be that one that's bent. But either way, one of them is flared out a little bit more. And that's why this trigger group will not lock up in any other stock other than the M1A Scout Squad's uh, MBS stock that it came with. So, 
and that's preventing me from taking this action this trigger and locking it into this woodstock and then just calling it you know a good day on the farm because if this would if this trigger group would just lock up with this action and this stock i'd be done there would be you know then i'd just migrate all the furniture off of the synthetic stock onto the wood one and call it a day but this trigger group has got some issues that will be needing remedied and if uh, i can't remedy the trigger group this particular trigger group's issue i'll just get another trigger group because fulton armory sells these for i mean they're not cheap but you can get replacement m1a trigger groups but I don't want to have to do that, but I'll try and mess around with it and see if I can get the M1A loaded, migrated over to this wood stock. Because, like I said, the, the lockup between the loaded's action and this wood stock is a lot tighter than it is the synthetics, the synthetic stocks. So, while I would be losing my cool ca custom camo job that I've had for nearly a decade now. And the only stock I've run the M1A loaded in thus far, I might be gaining some more accuracy with reloads and match ammo out of this bigger M1A. So this is a little little project that I'm going to endeavor in on the future because the little M1A, the, the M14A4 as I've called it, it's pretty much good to go, but it's a different philosophy of use than uh, the M1A loaded is. This one is set up for long distance. It has been since the beginning, and the other one's kind of a medium to close range rifle that can reach out to long distance. So, figured I'd let you all see this development here. I'll let you guys know as this goes on. I'm going to play around with both of them some more, um, but it might be a while before I get this stock squared away. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to, we're going to try and uh, move one of these uh, hooks over. Maybe disassemble this trigger group and kind of straighten it out and see if we can't get it to lock up then in another stock. And then I could always go between the two stocks for the M1A loaded as well. We'll see, but I figured I'd make a video on this because this is just a little project that I've just recently, we just literally recently cooked this up, just playing around with the different stocks. So catch you guys all in the next video and there will be updates as they come along. Catch you later.